Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock on a Monday, which means it's time for a five by five. And I have a very special five by five this week. I have a five by five all about Aldo Colombini. Now, if you do not know how Aldo Colombini is, he was one of the greatest creators and innovators of magic the world has ever seen. His talent know no bounds. Coin magic, card magic, mentalism, <laughs> Uh, rope magic, everything. He did absolutely everything. And his routines were so innovative. His routines were so unique. His routines were so different. And, um, you know, unfortunately, and I talked about this on a Hidden Gems recently, a couple of weeks ago, I did an Eldo Columbini trick that everybody loved. And I talked on there about how amazing Eldo Columbini is. And unfortunately, people don't do his tricks. And the reason don't do his tricks is a lot of them have been lost in time. Um, a lot of Eldo's tricks were in little packets and uh, little jiffy bags with printed out instructions. And unfortunately, you don't see people performing them anymore. But we absolutely 100% stand on the shoulders of giants. And Eldo Colombini was a giant in this industry. And his passing left a huge hole in the entire community. So what I'm trying to do on this 5x5 five five is showcase some of Eldo's work. Um, I did a Hidden Gems, as I said, a couple of weeks ago. You can go check that out in the Hidden Gems playlist. But on this week's 5x5, five five, I'm going to be performing and talking about five tricks that Eldo... And I'm not going to go through um, the, the really well-known tricks. I'm going to talk about five tricks that maybe are lesser known um, that really had an impact on me as a performer and as a creator. Um, if you like this video, let me know because Eldo released, I think, I think it was about seven or eight million tricks. So if you want to see more, if you want to do, uh, if you want me to do another Eldo Columbini 5x5 special, then let me know in the comments down below. But without further ado, let's get straight into this week's 5x5. We're looking at Eldo Columbini. Okay, so the first trick we're going to be looking at is Close Quarters by Eldo Columbini. And one of the things that I love that Eldo did is he had this ability to combine genres of magic. And it's something that really inspired me as a creator. Um, and, and a lot of my work and a lot of the stuff that you've seen me release over the years, especially stuff that goes on Netflix, has been inspired by this ability for uh, to, to try and combine genres. And this is a perfect example. So this routine is called Close Quarters and it was released through Columbini Magic. And Close Quarters is basically, in essence, a packet trick. Now there are millions of packet tricks out there, absolutely billions of packet tricks. What makes this one so good is that it is a great transition piece from coin magic into card magic or from card magic into coin magic. Because what you do is you bring out four cards and you're going to see the routine in a minute i'm going to perform it for you but you bring out four cards and you show that you've got quarters on each one of the cards so each card they've got normal backs but on the fronts they've all been printed with a little quarter a little american quarter right and you, you talk about how you know in magic in coin magic there's a trick called the matrix where coins jump around underneath cards and you thought that the best way to do this to prove that you're not cheating is to use cards that have got coins printed on them. That way there's no way you can cheat. You then proceed to lay the four cards out on the table and one by one the four coins vanish off the cards and appear in the corner. And when they turn the card over, now the card that was in the corner has got four quarters printed on it. And then as a kicker finish, you fuse those four quarters into a dollar sized coin. Um, and, and, and that card is examinable. Now, the entire packet isn't examinable, but because the construction of the routine is so clever and because the, the way that the, the, the packet is handled and the displays of seeing fronts and backs and the fact that at the end they're seeing genuinely three blank cards, because of that, they never want to examine this. They just want to look at the card that's just changed right in front of them. And when they do look at that card and it's changed, they, they, they just don't find anything. And like all of Eldo's magic, it resets instantly. Now, the one negative with this trick is it doesn't require, uh, it, does, it does require a table. I've played around in the past with having four people hold their hands out and it kind of works, but not really. It's a little bit cumbersome. 
The best way to do it is to have a table. Now you don't need any particular table space or anything like that. In fact, in the past, I've actually done this and I've had four wine glasses and I've put the cards on top of each wine glass and that works brilliantly. Um, you don't need a close-up pad or anything like that. But as I said at the very beginning, it's a great way to transition from one type of trick to the other. It's a great way to transition from a card trick to a coin trick. Because what you can do is you can be doing your card magic and then you can say, well, let me show you something with coins. Now, I know you're thinking this isn't a coin trick, but it is. Or you can do it the other way around. You can be doing coin magic and you can say, well, you know, the thing is, you probably think I'm cheating. Maybe I'm holding the coin secretly in my hand. That's absolutely not the case. But to prove it to you, I'm going to actually do it this way. And then you proceed to do it this way. So um, it's a fantastic routine. It's a perfect example of Eldo's genius routining and the way he can structure a trick. I'm going to do a full performance of it now so you can see exactly what it looks like. Um, but it's really cool. It's really, really cool. Now, I'm going to say the same thing on each one of these performances, but if you want to learn how these are done, as I say, a lot of them have been lost in time, but you can get Eldo stuff. If you search on eBay, if you search on Amazon, if you search on some of the uh, some magic shops, you might find that some people have some of his stuff in stock. So the best thing to do is just search around and search out there. But here's a performance of Close Quarters. I'm here with Matt. Hello. How are you doing, Matt? Is this another Eldo trick? Yeah, it's another Eldo Colombian trick. Epic. I know you like Eldo. It's like the best card trick I've ever seen. <laughs> Calls of the Colours, yeah. Yeah, really it cool. was amazing. So this is a really cool one. So okay. you know I do a lot of coin magic. I do. The problem when you do coin magic is people think that you cheat because the coins are small so you can hide them secretly in your hand, right? That's a, okay. that's the thing that people think. And have you ever seen the trick that I do where I take the coins and put them in the corners and I cover them up with cards and they jump around, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to figure out a way of doing that, but proving to people that I'm not using slider pad. And I realized that the best way to do it would be to use these cards. So I have these cards specially printed. There's four cards uh, all together. And, and I've had, they're not normal because on the other side of the cards, there's actually pictures of American quarter. So that's actually an American oh, cool. quarter. Yeah, right. Uh, and the idea is that one quarter goes right there nearest you. Okay. That leaves us with one, two, three. Now I'm going to put another quarter right there, like that, okay? I'm going to put another one right there like that, and this last one would go here, but I'm going to show you something amazing. Are you ready? Yeah. I'm going to take two of the quarters, this one and this one. Now I want you to watch. I'm going to put them together and give it a little twist. You know like in that trick where they all jump around, the coins disappear? Yeah. Well, that's what's happened now, you see. The coins have disappeared off the cards which is kind of crazy. But that's actually what's happened. The coins have disappeared off the cards. Now, it's not like I can hide them secretly in my hand because they're printed on the card. So it becomes slightly more impressive, right? Let's try it again with this one. In fact, you know what? Hold your hand out for me. I'll let you know what the magic feels like. I'm just going to put it right there. I'm going to do this from a distance. Watch if I just snap my fingers, turn it over and have a look. <laughs> It disappears <laughs> off that one. I mean, it's crazy, right? So we've now got three cards where the quarters were on there and now they've gone. But in the trick, they have to go somewhere, right? And they normally go underneath one card. And that card's been there the whole time. Turn it over. Yeah. <gasps> See, now the four coins are together in that card, which is pretty cool, right? I mean, that's a nice way of doing a coin trick, but without actually using coins. The yeah. thing is, each one of these is a quarter. So I don't know how well you know American currency. If we took four quarters and added them to together, what would we get? A dollar. Yeah, a dollar. And a dollar would look like this if I take those four coins and show <laughs> you actually end up with a dollar. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's so good. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Okay, so the next routine I want to talk about is assembly. Now, assembly is another kind of, it's, it's, it's kind of weird, really. Um, it's very weird. So what you do is, and again, it's another example of, of Aldo really thinking about um, a trick. And this is a packet trick that came out a while ago, a long, long while ago now. But the, the whole idea is that you have a regular deck of cards in use. And a lot of Eldo's stuff involves having a regular deck of cards in use, right? Um, especially his packet tricks. His packet tricks will be combined with a regular deck. And that's what the case is here. So you have a regular deck, right? And uh, you bring out a blank card. And you have the four aces, and you have the four aces, and you have a blank card, and you have the blank card examined, and you take the four aces from the deck. And then what you do is you put the blank card on the table, and you lay the four aces out in a square formation. 
And then you say, well, I'm going to use this blank card to make the aces assemble in one corner. And then what happens is in a very interesting way, and I've never seen anyone approach this sort of ace assembly plot like this before, but in a very interesting way, one at a time, the blank cards change with the aces that are down on the table until the end you have four aces in the corner of the cards and it's a really interesting use of the mexican turnover um and sort of the monty switch and it's it's a really interesting way of how you can actually get one ahead in a situation like this and the power of actually doing that when you see the construction of the routine it's really clever and i remember the first time i read this i was like that's not going to work that's not going to fly in front of a real audience damn it does it 100 percent does and then some uh, it really, really does. So, um, but that's the first phase. You then um, uh, lay them out again and you say you're going to do the same thing again. And this is an example of, of Eldo's routines being layered because what he'll do is he'll do something one way and then there'll be a kicker ending that you're just not going to see coming, right? Uh, and, and you think, you know, it's like leading the audience up the garden path that you know they're going to walk up and then kind of hitting them out of nowhere. And that's what happens with this routine because the second phase when you do it again, you end up with not the cards jumping, but the ink on the cards jumping. And it's such a well-constructed routine. The beautiful thing about this is everything's examinable at the end. You can then immediately examine everything and just by putting the cards away in your pocket, you'll reset ready to go again. And Eldo's routines, he spends a long time thinking about reset and thinking about the commercialness. Is that a word, commercialness? He spends a long time thinking about how commercial a routine can be and how to structure it so that everything is examinable and how to construct it so that there's a minimum of moves. And, and having studied Eldo's material, he knows a lot of moves, man. He's a move monkey and then some. But he goes for the simplest approach. He goes for the simplest approach every single time. You can see this in this trick. So let's have a look at it. This is called Assembly. I'm here with Matt. How are you doing, Matt? He's Aldo Who is his biggest fan. <laughs> yeah, officially a fanboy <laughs> for Aldo Um We're going to do something with a pack of cards and a very special card. This is a special card. Uh, it, it's got a blank face. You can have a look at it if you want it. Uh, it it's just blank, basically, is, is all you need to know. Uh, but that blank card allows you to do something pretty incredible with a deck of cards, which sounds ridiculous, but I'm going to prove it to you. And I'm not even going to use the whole deck. I'm just going to use some aces. So we'll use the ace of diamonds, the ace of hearts, the ace of spades, and finally, the ace of clubs. Okay. All right. So we're going to use the four aces for this. Four aces. Um, clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds. But the important thing here is the blank card. Did you check it out? Was it okay? Yeah. Yeah. The reason I use this blank card is because, well, I won't even use the rest of the deck, is because you're going to see something pretty insane. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the aces and I'm going to put them out into four corners, right? And okay. I'm going to take the ace. I'm going to take the, um, the blank card, sorry. I'm going to put it here. In fact, you know, do it like that. I'm going to put it here. All right. And the idea is that I'm going to try and make the aces assemble together, which sounds crazy. But watch, watch the blank card. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I just do this, did you see it happen? So what's actually happened now is the blank cards over there and over here we have <gasps> two aces. See, this blank card allows us to actually bring all of the aces together in one place. I'll do it again with this one, the Ace of Hearts, right? You know what's going to happen. I want you to watch. All I have to do is this. And just like that, now the blank card's over there. <laughs> and over there we have the aces. Now look, make sure I'm not cheating. You see the aces there, yeah? What's this last card? The Ace of Clubs. I'm going to put that Ace of Clubs as far away from that blank card as I can get. Look, it's out of reach. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? Watch. What's that noise? I'll do this so it's me out of reach. I'm going to do this in slow motion. Are you ready? I'm going to slow it down so you might see it happen. Watch. <laughs> I think that's ridiculous but that would be <gasps> all four. Oh my god now there's another rule of magic that's pretty cool right 
Yeah. But there's another rule of magic, and you've probably heard about this rule, never repeat a trick. The first time it's entertainment, the second time it's educational. Yeah. I'm going to do it again. But make sure I don't cheat. There's the Ace of Spades. There's the Ace of Diamonds. There's the Ace of Cards. There's the Ace of Clubs. And there's that blank card that's going to make everything happen. Now look, the Aces are all going to jump to join that Ace there. One there, one there, one there, one there. Are you ready? I'm going to do all of them at the same time. Totally done. What do you mean done? Well, I've made all the aces go together. You can't. What, no, I, I don't. don't, I, don't understand. I just did it a little bit. I did it in a slightly different way. I didn't make the actual physical card. I said I was going to make the aces come together. And what I've managed to do is make all four aces come together. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? From this card and this card and this card. It's the... No. Now, this is another Eldo Colombini trick that I've been doing for years. And I remember picking this up probably about 15 years ago at the convention. And I must have spent the best part of a few hours trying to figure out where I got it from and the name of the trick. And I can't. So I can't tell you the name of this trick. All I can tell you is I picked it up many, many years ago. It was at a convention. It was in a little Ziploc bag. And I picked it up with a bunch of Eldo stuff. And it's really good. It's uh, basically, it's a um, it's a version of Wildcard. So it's, a, it's, it's kind of a version of Peter Kane's Wildcard. But the different thing here is you're not kind of approaching it in a standard Wildcard way. What you're doing is you're approaching it in... Uh, kind of, if you've ever seen okay, uh, Paramount by Aldo Colombini, Paramount is another trick that's really good. Uh, and it was popularized on Michael Amar's Easy to Master, uh, Michael Amar's Easy to Master Card Magic series. He did this routine called Paramount. Paramount is absolutely fantastic, right? Um, and he introduced the concept of a photocopy card. Well, that's what we're having here. We're going down that route again. So we've got this kind of photocopy card that photocopies um the uh the photocopies the cards it's kind of a really interesting plot it's very to i'm going to perform it for you but what's nice about this is again it's an example of his routining there's cards in here that aren't examinable but even though they're not examinable the focus isn't on the cards that aren't examinable the focus are on the cards that are examinable and at the end Everything is completely uh, reset and ready to go again. So it's a really cool routine. It's a great version of Wildcard. I'm going to perform that for you now. So let's have a look at it. How you doing, Matt? Eldo. Eldo. You know, <laughs> big fan of Eldo, right? <laughs> yeah. Big Eldo Colombini fan. Big I am. Eldo Colombini fan. I am now. Um, so this uses uh, a pack of playing cards and some kind of modern technology, which sounds crazy, but it's true, built into what I have inside this uh, this envelope, which we'll get to in a minute. Okay. First of all, uh, I need you to pick a card, or actually four cards. So I'm going to go through the cards. Just say stop anytime you want. Stop. Right there, you sure? Sure. Want one more card, or are you happy? Yeah, one more. Stop there? Yeah. Okay, cool. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the four cards that you, uh, you picked, and we're just going to put them out like this on the table, okay? Okay. We won't use the rest of the cards. It's not really about the cards that you've picked. It's more about these cards. So what I have here are special playing cards that you can only get if you're a magician. <laughs> no, seriously, they're called photocopy cards. Okay. And they're designed to photocopy images. Now, no, seriously, no, seriously, seriously. Now, from this side, they're, they're blank because, I mean, obviously, if you're going to photocopy something, you have to have blank stock to work with. So there's seven cards all together, four, five, six, seven, and they're blank on this side. Now, all of them are blank on the other side except for one. The primer card, um, sorry, all of them have got normal backs except for one, which is the primer card, which is blank on both sides. You see, it's, it, I keep it in the middle. This one here, this is the only one that's blank on both sides. Now, that's important, and you'll see why that's important in a minute. Okay. Um... I'm going to deal six of the cards 
out on the table. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that leaves us with the primer card. That's that one. Now, it doesn't look, have a look at it, it doesn't look like there's anything weird going on there, does it? It's literally just a blank. Yeah, blank but card. if you add it to these two photocopy cards, miracles happen. So all I have to do is slide it underneath this card that you've picked. And then I have to take it, and it's really important, if you're going to try this at home, make sure the side that you touch, the face of this card, has to go here like this. And then you wait a second. You've got to wait at least three seconds. One, two, three. And then hopefully, look, it'll print a ten of spades, right? It'll print a ten of spades in between the other two cards. And that's interesting because you picked a ten, right? Let's do that again. Um... She might have missed it, right? You might have missed it. So this time, you know what's going to happen. It is genuinely just blank, isn't it? Like, this is the primer card. This is what makes it happen. But look, if you just take the card and you just do this, you wait a second and then you slide under this one. Now, it's important to wait three seconds else it won't develop. One, two, three. Let's have a look. Look, we've got a four, um, which is interesting because over here, you picked a four. Right. Let's do this one more time. Again. It is genuinely just blank, right? You can't feel like there's a special substance on there. There is, but it's designed so that you can't feel it. I really shouldn't be telling you this. I'm giving away the secrets of magic here. This is how magicians print cards. There we go. There's the last one. You can probably feel it a little bit. Once I've touched this card, you can probably feel just a bit, maybe. If I put it here. Now, remember, you've got to wait three seconds else it won't work. One, two, three. And let's have a look. Oh, there you go. Yep, there you go. That's the, uh, that's the nine. Which is interesting that we got the nine, because over here, that's the nine. Now, <clears throat> obviously, there's, there is something else that you can do with this card. As well as, as well as printing cards, you can actually do a, a slightly different thing. So, for example, watch this. We're, we're going to look at the last card. The King of Clubs, right? Watch. If I just do this, this time I'm not going to try and print the King of Clubs exactly, but you picked a king. So I'm going to try and do this, watch. Done. Did you see what happened there? No. Watch. No! Oh my god! <laughs> the guy's a genius! <laughs> That's next level, isn't it? It's good, isn't it? Oh my god! Like, I got nothing, man. <laughs> There's always one more twist at the end. It's always something else, isn't it? It just keeps giving. He gives the tricks to just keep giving. That's insane! That's yeah. insane. Nuts, isn't it? Okay, so the next routine that we're going to be talking about is Speed Aces. And Speed Aces is a really interesting Eldo Colombini plot. And, and basically, it's another example of taking two uh, distinct routines in card magic and fusing them together into one. So what he's done here is he's taken the ambitious classic and he's taken the Hoffs and Jerace problem and he's combined them together into one routine. So if you don't know what those routines are, ambitious classic is a small packet ambitious card where the card comes to the top of the deck. You've got a small packet of cards and the card keeps coming up to the top of the deck. It's uh, a very popular plot in card magic. But he's combined it with the Hoffs and Jerace problem. Um, which is uh, basically a uh, transposition between uh, one card in a four of a kind and a selected card. Um, and it's really genius the way he's done this, because my problem with the Huff and Jerace problem, and this is, uh, sorry, my problem with Ambitious Classic, and this has always been a problem of mine, is that um, the, the, um, is, there's no ending to it. There's no ending to Ambitious Classic. The card comes to the top, it comes to the top, it comes to the top, it comes to the top, and then that's it, end of trick. With this, you're doing the Ambitious Classic, but you have a reason for doing it. The reason that you're doing this whole thing where the cards are coming to the top is because you're trying to find out the identity of the spectator's card. And you find out the identity, and then, as soon as you find the revelation, you've got that kickback, Hoff Sindre style thing, which really gives the effect full circle closure. It's a really nice way. And if there's one thing that you can learn from this video, it's sometimes when you're creating magic, 
you can take two concepts in magic or two plots in magic and go, well, what would happen if I put those two together? What would that look like? And that's what I think Eldo's done here. I think he said, right, I've got Ambitious Classic. I've got the Hofsinger Ace problem. If I put them together, what's that going to look like? Well, I'll tell you what it's going to look like. It's going to look like this. I'm here with Matt. How are you doing, Hello. Matt? Cool. Uh, Eldo come... tricks. Again. Eldo, call me the tricks. <laughs> uh, pack of 52 cards. You want to give them a shuffle? Uh, you can do if you want to. Make sure they're all messed right. up. Yeah, yeah. Give them a shuffle. Make sure it is uh, just a deck of cards. You happy? Yeah, they're going to And then they're spread they're the cards out so you can see the faces and icons and take any card out that you like the look of. But do me a favour, don't take um don't take don't take an ace. I'll need the aces later on. But any other card is fine. Okay. You want, yeah, yeah, go for it. You want that one? You happy? Yeah? Cool. And uh, just say stop. Stop. Okay, you want to put the card back there? And did did you did you show the guys at home? They yeah. saw it, yeah, cool. So I'm gonna um Leave your card in it. Well, you know what I'll do? I'm just going to bury it a little bit further down, if that's all right. Is that okay? You can push it in yourself. Now, do you want me to shuffle or leave them exactly as they are? Shuffle. Okay. That, that fair? You want another shuffle or is that okay? Another one. Another shuffle. <laughs> Have you ever helped a magician before? <laughs> <That's>, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now you know all my lines. How's that? Is that okay? Or, yeah. Uh, yeah, cool. So I'm just going to take out the four aces. Uh, let me see. We have the ace of hearts. We have the... <laughs> this is where I find out it's not a full deck. Uh, ace of clubs, <laughs> ace of diamonds, <laughs> ace of spades. There we go. Uh, perfect. So um, I'm going to get back to your card in a bit. The aces are going to help you find your card. Seriously. First of all, okay. they're going to help me work out what the suit of your card is. And then once they've told me the suit of the card, they're going to tell me exactly what it is and where it is. Which okay. sounds incredible, but it's true. So we're going to use the four aces for this. So we've got the uh, we've got the ace of spades, we've got the ace of diamonds, we've got the ace of uh, hearts, and we've got the ace of cl uh, clubs. It stands to reason that one of these aces is actually uh, has the same suit as the card that you picked, unless you pick the joker, right? So uh, we have to figure out what it is, and we start with the ace of spades. Now, don't tell me if it's a spade or not. I will know, because if I take that ace of spades and put it at the bottom of the packet, and wait two seconds, one, two. If it comes to the top magically, that tells me that it's not a spade. Am I right? <laughs> Your card is not a spade, am I right? Yeah. Yeah, perfect, okay. So we'll do this again, because obviously, you know, you won't miss it. We'll do the club, so we'll work out if it's a club or not. The idea is I just put it at the bottom. I wait a second, one, two. If it comes to the top, yeah, it tells me it's not a club. Your card is not a club, am I right? Yeah, yes, okay. you're right. Let, yeah. Well, let's try again. We'll, go, we'll take the diamond, okay? You understand what's happening now. I'm going to put the diamond at the bottom like this. One, two. Comes to... Oh, hang on. Comes to the top. There we go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, that tells me that your card's not a diamond. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, so that tells me that your card has got to be the Ace of Hearts. Is that correct? Uh, your card's got to be a heart, sorry, not the Ace of Hearts, but your card's got to be a heart, is that correct? It was a heart, yeah. So all I have to do is look at the angels on the back, and it'll tell me what your card is. Look, if you look at the angels here, um, and you look into the eye of the angel. Yeah, I've got it. Your card's the Seven of Hearts. Am I right? Yeah? Seven of Hearts. Yeah. Yeah, it's the angel, not me. But here's the thing, if I take your... If I take the Ace of Hearts and wave it over the pack, if your card turned face up in the middle of the deck now, would that be good? Yeah. Yeah. It'd be an even better trick if it was the Ace of Hearts that had turned face up in the middle of the deck because the card over there that you thought was the Ace, well, that would be your Seven of Hearts. What? Oh, my God! <laughs> you all right? Don't even know how that one worked. Weird. Why are all of his tricks so good? I know. I know, he's amazing. <laughs> That's such a good trick. It's great, isn't it? He does release the best. Where did that come from? <laughs> Told you it was good. So the final trick that I'm going to be talking about this week on this week's uh, Eldo Columbini 5x5 special is mat tricks. Now, mat tricks was actually, it uses the same props that you get in assembly. When I showed you assembly earlier on, uh, which is an incredible trick, um, 
there were, there were two routines, assembly and matrix. And Eldar used to do this an awful lot. He's a perfect example of something that producers and creators should understand more of these days, which is under promise and over deliver. He was always adding extra routines. So you'd buy a packet trick thinking you pay, you've got this packet trick, but then there'll be two or three extra routines in there. And this is a perfect example of a little bonus routine that you get at the end of assembly, which is just as good as assembly. So what we have here is we have a kicker ending to a matrix routine. Um, but again, it's a perfect example. I've talked about this several times on this video. One thing that uh, Eldo does really well is he will present a trick and just when you think it's over, boom, something else happens. You saw that with, uh, with, with the wildcard thing that I did earlier. You know, you've got this whole printing process, then boom, the kings appear. You know, and, and it's, it's a perfect example of, of, of layering an effect and having kicker after kicker after kicker. And you're gonna see that here. So you're gonna see basically what is in essence a classic four coin matrix, right? But then once you've done that classic four coin matrix, I mean, wow, you say that you're going to do it again. And, and then all of the pips off the cards jump and, and the switch and the way that he does the switch is so strong because he understands about misdirection. He understands about on beat and off beat. And you'll see all of that in this routine. So let's have a look yeah, yeah. at that. Well, this is a trick with a deck of cards and also a piece of dust. Can you see the piece of dust right there? There's a piece of dust. If you take the dust and put it into your hand and squeeze, it turns into an American half dollar. What the fuck? Let me do that again. You take another piece of dust, you put it into your hand, you squeeze, you get another coin. You take another piece of dust, you put it into your hand, you get another coin. You take another piece of dust, you put it in your hand, you get another coin, four coins. Now we're ready to begin. Jesus Christ, that's um, intense. Really? Yes. <laughs> Have a look at the coins. It's an intense way to start a trick, dude. I know, right? Easing people in gently. There's no lube involved in this trick. No, there? no, no, no. We're going all in. Yeah. All in and deep. Right. I'm also going to take out the four aces from this deck. Uh, have you examined the coins? Yes, I have. Cool. And what I would like you to do, Matt, is just check the four aces out. Just make sure that there's nothing weird about them. Uh, they are okay, but feel free to check them out and make sure there's no wires, magnets, trapdoors, or secret compartments. Well, there's two red and two black, and they've all got different shapes on them, so I think we're all right. Yeah, we're good. Okay, cool. So the four aces uh, are going to be used in a second to cover up the four mm. coins, okay? Um, so in other words, we're going to put, how should we do this? We'll put one coin here, we'll put one coin here, we'll put one coin here, one coin here, one coin here. So underneath each ace, there's, there's a coin. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Now, I want you to watch this. This one here is going to be designated as the leader ace. Uh, and uh, we'll start with this one. Watch. It kind of looks like that. I'll do it again. You might have Holy it. hell! I'll do it again. This time with uh, with this one, okay? Uh, I mean, you don't see it go, but it goes. It's quite <laughs> quick, really. Um, let's try it one last time. Watch. That's all four. Jesus. I'll tell you what, <laughs> we'll, do, we'll do it again. Lay, lay the coins out in a, in a, in a square form, actually, yeah, so you know I'm not cheating. Cool. Which one do you want to have as the leader coin? That one. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. Watch. Now, there is genuinely a coin under each one of those cards. There is, yeah. I can see it from, yeah, there's a coin under each one of those cards. Are you ready for me to make the aces assemble again, yeah? Yeah. Watch. There you go. What? Done. Done what? I did what I said. What did you say? What did I say? I was just going to do You were going to assemble all the aces? Yeah, I said the aces. I didn't say the coins. The coins are still where they are. The aces, Matt, they have assembled. Uh, and I have to be honest with you, as for the coins, it's all an illusion. You were never even close to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a dick. Yep. <laughs> Throw a bit of a rune clan Viking vanish in at the end as well. I, I, no. Yes. <laughs> 
there you go, guys. That's another 5x5 five five in the bag. First of all, I just want to say rest in peace, Eldo Colombini. Thank you very much for what you did in the Magic community and the effects they live on every single time somebody performs one of your wonderful creations. Over to you. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Would you like to see another Eldo Colombini 5x5 five 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 special? What do you think of the routines I chose to include in this 5x5? Uh, five five five? Do you agree? Was Eldo a genius? Let me know in the comments down below. You know, people like Cameron Francis were influenced heavily by Eldo's material. Uh, anyway, you want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. I'm going to be back again uh, tomorrow with another video. And if you haven't already done so, please check out The Netrix. It's www.thenetrix.com. I'll see you again soon. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV. Mm -hmm.